Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Nula McGuinn. I'm director at the Centre for Adult Learning and Professional Development at NUI Galway. And you're all very welcome to our Adult Learning Virtual Information Evening. Whether this event reaches you at home or further afield, I invite you to listen in and join in our panel discussion this evening. So what's in store for you? Well, over the course of the next 40 minutes, we're going to discuss what's involved in being an adult learner, what type of learning experience awaits you at NUI Galway? We'll give you some pointers on how to choose the right course for you. And you'll have an opportunity to find out more about skills needs and how you can be better prepared for the workplace of the future. There is a chat function in the webinar tonight and where you can pose some general questions for the panel. But I'd suggest if you have any specific course related queries that you'd use the questions and answers session that's going to follow directly after this webinar and pose those questions there as our academic staff are on hand to respond to you directly. So this evening I'm joined by uh, Jackie Murphy. Jackie is a lecturer on our training and education programs, our sociology and politics and early childhood studies programs at the centre. So you're very welcome, Jackie. Great to see you. We also have Lorraine Lally and Lorraine is a part time student on the diploma in management. Hi, Lorraine. You're very welcome. And uh, finally, we have Kieran Duggan. Uh, Kieran was a recent graduate from the MSc in Ag Innovation and he completed that course last academic year. So hello everyone again and thanks very much for joining me this evening. So perhaps we just might get started and Jackie I might start with yourself um, I know you've been teaching for a good over 20 years in fact at the university and you've met a lot of adult learners in that time. Can you maybe tell me a little bit about who would normally undertake a part-time course of study at the university and what tends to be their motivation in, in doing so? Oh, well, thanks so much for having me here, Nula, this evening, and it's, it's, it's lovely to be able to join you. So, yes, Nula, as you say, um, I first began um, teaching with adult learning. Um, oh, my goodness. Yes, I think it was around 2001 and 2002. So I've had great experience of meeting the many different types of adult learners that we facilitate as, as, um, as I've moved through this journey and hopefully many more years to come with it as well. Our learners are all different, Nula, and it's very interesting because today I was at a meeting with our Dean of the School of, of Arts and she was speaking about who are our learners and who are our students and this idea that we want to have distinctive and innovative, connective and inspiring students. And I feel like adult learners have always been all of those things. So I guess to begin with, our learners come from all backgrounds. So my classroom might have people who have completed PhDs to people who maybe left school after primary school and never completed secondary school, but have decided that now is the time that they wish to return to education. And trust me, that is a daunting experience for whoever decides to take that step to progress their own future careers. So I guess my Really, when I think about what innovates our students and my wonderful colleagues, Kieran and, and Lorraine will be really able to, to help us out here. But there are many different reasons as to why my learners come to my, my, to, to my class and why I get to facilitate them in their journey. Sometimes it's about career progression. So sometimes it's about upskilling. It can be that experience where you have lots and lots of practical and real learning, real world experience. You can manage a classroom or you can manage a group of people. You've been doing it for years. But perhaps you've never had the opportunity to maybe dip into the theory that's behind all of the different things that you do in your everyday life. Or maybe it's that case we are in a competitive environment where you would like the qualification to back up your wealth of experience that you've gained in, 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 in your own maybe voluntary life, your own family life or, or your work life. That's one reason. But there are other reasons as well. There is the joy in knowledge. So oftentimes, maybe before you've had a bad education experience and maybe school just wasn't for you, you know, that, that the system that, we, that you worked in or that you came from, it just, it didn't ignite you or, 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 or kind of spark that passion that you might have. And then as an adult, we become to recognize the things that we love and we learn and, and the things that I'm always kind of, my ear is pricking up when I hear it or when I'm on the, if when I hear it on the radio when I'm driving, that's what grabs my attention. So sometimes it's the pure hunger and joy of knowledge where learners come back in. And here's the thing, they often start, I often find that learners might start for a six week course, they're not doing anymore, they're not interested in anymore, but before you know it, 
the theory they've gotten the bug you know they've gotten this idea of actually what is knowledge and it's not something for me to pass to you that's not how higher education works it's really much more about us journeying through together thinking about the different theories thinking about the different things that might exist there how we might approach it and then the really fun part is pulling it all apart so you know trying to decide is this a good approach or is it a bad approach and that's where I kind of find that my adult learners really have the, the, the jump ahead on my younger students and our younger students are always welcome. Remember, you're an adult learner once you turn 21. So that's the kind of age range that we're thinking about. But my adult learners are much more able to kind of critically think about what it is that we're looking at and question, you know, be really kind of open to, to wondering and, and kind of thinking about what, what are we talking about? So I love the classroom where you introduce a theory and then you always get about three or four going, ah, 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 don't even try that in practice because here's what's happened to me. And that makes for a really good learning environment. So I suppose my our students and our adult learners, they're everyone. They're, they're, they're anyone that has found themselves lucky enough to be in the position that maybe they can dedicate an hour or two of their week to progressing something that's important to them, to their own academic progression, maybe their own career progression, or maybe just something that it's always what they wanted to do. And I'll leave on this, like oftentimes, you know, I've had students that have through their hard work, funded their kids to come up through the education system. They were the ones footing the bills for, for you know, nights out, rent, uh, books, all of the thing. And they never got the opportunity themselves. And I guess what NUIG is doing, and, and, and especially the Centre for Adult Learning and Professional Development, is that now they're offering that student, that person, the chance to progress their career and finally kind of get the chance to invest in themselves. And I promise I'll stop now, <laughs> but I will leave it at this, is that Remember when we speak about our programs here this evening that we're talking about higher education and it's so different to maybe what your secondary or your past education experiences have been, you know, positive or negative, it is so different. And I guess for the Centre of Adult Learning and, and, and what teaching and, and, and working with my, my students means to me is that, you know, we're focusing on your future, on achieving your potential, not what happened in the past or went wrong in the past, but more how, how we can build for that. So yeah, so I guess, it, our learners come from everywhere. Very mixed group. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And you've really given a wonderful foreground, maybe to my next question, which I might uh, ask Lorraine. Lorraine, did you find yourself in that description? What was your motivation in taking the diploma in management? I suppose I, I fit into one of those categories. I am someone who has been to education before, but I actually found myself in a situation with my work where I was in a managerial role and I've never actually had any management education training or anything like that. And all of a sudden I'm expected to manage people and do evaluations and handle that side of it. And I did the diploma in management with the desire to learn the theory, but also to work on the practice and as it was already mentioned, our class was very diverse and a wonderful group of people. Um, our course was entirely online. So when we met for the first time, we all came together and um, we developed a WhatsApp group and we've all stayed in touch. But people were from all sorts of backgrounds. There were some people in our course who were traveling all over Europe during the course. Other people working in management in retail for 10, 20 years, 20 years experience telling us their stories, what worked, what didn't work. And, you know, the, the conversations, the diverse nature of it, the flexibility as well of the class and the course was wonderful. And I would say that probably the other adult learners were an additional benefit for me because I felt I learned as much from them as I did from the lecturers. They were also a great joy and a support for each other. And I suppose when you study online, that was one question we all had when we met up at the first at the first meeting we had at the beginning of the year before COVID, this would have been two years ago. Our first question was, you know, could we do this on our own at alone, you know, online at home? What we found is as a class, we supported each other and we got we got through. And you know, people, some people hadn't been to education in 15 years and they they were really some of the tasks were hard or challenging, but they used all the supports that were available. There's an academic writing centre, there was tutorials. The, the lecturers and the tutors are usually people who work as well, and they were really, really supportive and engaging um, for the students. And then we might have had some adult um, students as well with um, some learning issues, and, and they got support as well with dyslexia and other issues in the college, because you're treated as any other student and your access is there for you and that was amazing to see as well and for the people who'd returned they were just so proud when they'd finished and so thrilled and their families were so happy so you know 
I found out as well recently that four or five of them are going to progress on to do a degree online. So that's just amazing. You know, these are people who returned and now they want to make the university a home for another four years. So that's where it can lead if you want to. And it is about the joy of knowledge and the joy of sharing and the joy of learning together. So it really does um, build on your, I suppose, your experience of people. And I can tell you, during the last year, during COVID, during the pandemic, it was great to have them as a support and it was great to have something else to talk about besides you know what. So <laughs> that was really, really enjoyable. Very good. So you started from a professional angle, Lorraine, but ended up finding a, a new bunch of friends, which was fantastic for you. Absolutely. Kieran, can I come to you? And um, your background is slightly different, I think, to Lorraine's, which always makes it interesting for our learners to find out a bit more about. Tell us what motivated you to the Masters in Ag Innovation. All of, I think you must have started over two years ago, that initial yeah. journey. Yeah, it, it, it was about two years ago. Yeah, I'm afraid I fall into the more experienced age age range in in, in the as the, the the learners go <laughs> so yeah um so i have dyslexia and it has it has sort of uh, um it has defined my relationship with with learning for a long 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 time um i decided a long time ago i just barely got my leaving cert back in in uh, 1982, and I I decided learning wasn't for 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 me, although I was always very curious, um, and uh, I had have had a varied career in 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 business of all different di different sorts and and types, um, and um, back in 2015 a business that I had invested a lot of time and energy for, for about 12 years in uh, folded. And that was difficult. It was difficult for, for, for everyone, for, for me and for everyone around me, because it wasn't only just sort of uh, a, a financial shock. It's sort of, um, I had invested so much in it. I, I, it, it had become part of, part of my identity. It took me a, f a couple of years to, to pull myself up out of that place. And um, eventually I decided I had better sort of um, have a look and see about some 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 learning. But I knew that my my experience level in it was was such that for, for me to, to 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 start low down in the I, I with, with a fairly basic course and I, I knew that wasn't going to challenge me so to make a long story short i gave a crack at um uh applying for the for the the um ag innovate M, msc and and miraculously was was offered a place in it um okay. it's been it, it's been really good um i i i decided that i would study something that I was interested in. I wasn't looking at a possible future career. I wasn't looking at, at sort of, I, I, I had this decided that I would actually follow my own interest. And innovation was something I, I was always interested in and the ag business and uh, agriculture was something I, so, so I, the, the, the two coming together. So really I, I followed what, what my interest as opposed to uh thinking trying to think out what what would be a good career move or, or what whatever like that uh, well, that's fantastic because uh, one of the key things is to learn to love what you're studying and it just makes life so much easier so i think that's fantastic uh, advice for our listeners this evening and i'm just thinking then about your course was blended learning and lorraine's was a, an online learning course and i know jackie for the past year we've been teaching in a fully online mode and um for the next semester we're intending to stay largely online and um, i'm just wondering for the experience of our learners can you tell us a little bit about what they should expect being an online learner and what online learning looks and feels like yeah, I'd be delighted to Nula. And first of all, Kieran and Lorraine, thank you so much for sharing your stories. It's so, you know, it's so interesting every time that we hear what what motivates a learner to come to our classroom. And and just what Kieran was 
talking about there a moment ago. So Karen, it's a master's, isn't it, that you took on. So you used um, this route that we have in adult learning, which is called recognize prior learning, which means that if you've done other courses before, you can use those courses to maybe get into higher levels up your academic career ladder. So, you know, you can start at whatever level it is that you feel comfortable with and that your experience is going to assist you with. So don't always think that there's just one straight ladder and I climb it. There's lots of different ways of accessing the education program that you want to pursue. And like you said, it's it's to love what you want to do. So sorry, Nula, I will get back. So what do our classrooms look like? Well, apart from this very fancy backdrop of the quad, uh, you're joining me here um, at my kitchen table where I have bribed my two children to be quiet for one more evening for Mama while she sits and chats at her computer. So we have moved um, all of our programs online and we're very lucky and fortunate that adult learning have actually been moving towards a blended and an online mode of delivery for many years now. So some of our programs have been online for many years before Lorraine that dreaded thing that we won't speak about before that hit. And it meant that last, you know, August that adult learning was in a really good position that we knew that our programs were ready to be delivered fully online and also that our lecturers were familiar with how it is that they were going to do that. So it wasn't quite the baptism of fire that it was. So what we do in adult learning is that we have what we call this virtual learning environment called Blackboard. Now, I know when I first heard about Blackboard, I was kind of searching all around for a piece of chalk or whatever else, but no, I have learned that there's this amazing website that's completely and utterly close to just you and your class colleagues and your lecturer. And it becomes this learning space where you can either drop into chats like this for maybe your lectures or your, your classes. Although in adult learning, we don't tend to do lectures as much as we do what Kieran was saying and Lorraine was saying, we kind of engage with one another and kind of think about and talk about what our topics are about. So we have our Blackboard web page. You log in with your own credentials. It's a very space close safe. It's space, it's just you and your lectures. And where you begin to look at the different content that you would be studying for your program of study. And you begin to engage in different learning activities, different ways of um, really engaging with the topic that you're looking at. So within adult learning, we have a wonderful learning technologist, Dr. Bonnie Long, and she's been at the forefront of designing online education for many years now. So she's been helping us to know how best to facilitate our learners. And I'm sure Kieran and Lorraine, you've been kind of experiencing parts of that where, you know, just understanding how do we use discussion boards and online forums. So that's kind of how your classroom feels. So probably your classroom will be you and a laptop and a good cup of tea. Or it could be you on your phone in the car at a quiet space. It really just depends. Your learning happens at, at, at a space and time that suits you. Um, sometimes you might be invited to come and attend live classes like this, where we would all meet at a certain time that's live and we can chat to one another. But maybe if that time frame doesn't suit you, you can also engage with us in another way, which is engaging with us at a time that suits you. So the material is all there, but you'll start to engage with it when you're ready to. Should I talk about assessments? Should I talk about essays? Well, you know what? We might come back to the assessment. <laughs> the hot topic, Jackie. What it might maybe might be opportune to ask Lorraine, how was the online uh, course for you? You chose a fully online course. What was your experience of that? I would say that choosing it, there is this hesitation, you know, you're going to be alone at home or in work with the online space Blackboard, which is very, very accessible. Um, I would say that it was very well planned and organised. I would agree with you. Bonnie Long is someone who we got to know actually on our course, so I, I do know who you're talking about. Um, the lecturers were very well um, versed on what to expect, and our course was very organised. A lot of the reading materials were put up in advance. We were given the reading lists in advance when we asked when, yeah, at the beginning of the year. So we were actually given books and stuff that we could read in between um, during the summertime, the break and uh, books to order if we wanted from, from Amazon or wherever. And that organization was vital for, for most of us because a lot of people were juggling work and family commitments and other things. So I would say the online programs were very well, um, very well developed, very well planned and prepared for and very enjoyable. We also did um, an online workshop over a weekend for negotiation skills. Mm -hmm. And the lecturer there wasn't even in the country, but we did it all online. And again, very well organized, very well developed. All the learning materials were given in advance and we were given the chance to read them and put into groups. And 
it, it sounds a little bit strange, but we all thoroughly enjoyed that weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday together online. Um, initially, it would usually be in person, but it worked extremely well online and it was very well uh, managed. And I would say that um, perhaps we were not as familiar as we are now, but that on the whole, the, the organisation, the planning preparation, when that's in place and when people turn up and engage, we, we really enjoyed it as a class. And it was probably the most positive feedback I'd say we gave all year was that negotiation weekend together where we, we got a chance to, to meet more people and to spend a weekend negotiating um, using our negotiation skills and practice. So I think that um, the online space is very, um, very useful and I think very diversely used in the university. So um, we really enjoyed the online and I know that there are people in my class who work nights as well and they would have been watching back the lectures. They couldn't have made the lecture at half seven and they'd be saying to me, I'll watch it at 4 a.m. and it's fine and uh, I'll be grand. And if I have any questions, I can let the lecturer know or put it in the discussion form and other people would engage. Um, that accessibility is vital for people because not everyone has a nine to five job. So. Mm -hmm. um, there would have been people in the biotech sector in, in Medtronic and stuff in other places who would have been working nights or working days or had family commitments. So online really works and we really enjoyed it. And I would say the tech support and everything was very good. There was never any issues that weren't resolved within 24, 48 hours. So we really did appreciate all the supports and they were there. The staff were there for us. So, you know, they are there. And um, I know sometimes people hesitate, you know, will the staff be available? They definitely were. And I know as well, because I was the class rep this year, <laughs> uh, that one of the course facilitators actually had a private, we had a Zoom, the two of us. So she said, if there's anything coming up, we can organize a date to have a Zoom, the two of us, and you give me some feedback before the next semester. So, you know, that organization again is vital and um, students really, really appreciate it. Well, that's Great to hear, Lorraine. And we're always interested in student feedback, certainly to improve our courses. And um, Kieran, I'm just going to come to you. I know when you started your course, you were uh, it was to be delivered by blended learning, and you would have come to class on campus periodically. And then, right bang in the middle of it, you were thrown into something that you hadn't expected. You became a fully online learner in March 2020. How did you handle that transition? Um, I suppose it would be fair to say that that I probably wouldn't have signed up for all on online or originally. I, I would have been afraid of it. I, again, the, the the technology, while I'm able to manage with it, I, I, I certainly at that stage, I, I yeah, I could manage, but I wasn't in my comfort zone at all. Um, by the time uh, the the first lockdown came came along. We we I I was becoming comfortable with the blackboard and all that kind of stuff, but um, really the um, the the periodic classes in in person were were where I really was was doing most of my learning. So yeah, it it was challenging, but it's 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 like a lot of things. When you've no other option, you just have to get stuck in and and make the best of it. And I I would say that 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 has been very useful because I I really did get past my fear of the, the technology etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Learned the, the old dog learned a few new tricks. So um, we're, we're so yeah I I'm glad. I was forced to do it because it, now I'm now I'm 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 equipped much better for for the the future. I'd say, yeah. Well, fantastic! You're a great model role model to your your family, Kieran. Being thrown into it and managing it, so well done for that. And um, Jackie, I, when Lorraine was speaking there, she mentioned about supports for learners uh, that were available to help them transition back into study. And I know in your classroom, you guide students to those supports. Will you tell us a little bit about the ones that you feel are the most useful and that you get good feedback from students uh, on? Yes, I'd be delighted to. So I would say that as a learner coming into um, adult learning in a new IG, um, really, I would say that there's two types of supports available to you. There's the formal supports that I'll speak about now, and then also the informal supports, which I think Lorraine had been speaking about, which is your classmates and that community of practice that you build together as a group. 
So just in regards to the formal supports, um, Kieran, like you, I have dyslexia. So, um, and I was diagnosed while I was at college. So always found secondary school incredibly difficult, but did manage to find myself in university. And then at that stage, um, I, 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 I received my diagnosis and then started to engage in the supports. So we have um, the Disability Support Centre here in NUIG, which strive to, to help students that may have um, any kind of learning um, it's kind of different ways of learning and different types of learning are perhaps maybe they perceive that they have encountered difficulties before in the past, never investigated them. And now being an adult learner, those things are coming on board. So, so that's just one lot of the support services that are there. But then I can know truly that you don't just have to have dyslexia to be petrified of writing. So, you know, many of us as adult learners coming back into the classroom, that first assessment can be really daunting because you may not have um, written like this before or had to produce a piece of work like this before. So we have the Academic Writing Centre and we also have the wonderful librarians at James Hardyman Library. Now, Lorraine mentioned it earlier, early on, which is as an adult learner, as a part time learner, you might not feel like you have full access to these services, but you really do. And the staff there really want to reach out. We, we um, work closely with them as, as we progress throughout the year. And indeed, they often find that our adult learners are amongst those that are most prepared when they're coming to them. So if you're feeling a little bit, you know, the heebie-jeebies around kind of writing or communicating or maybe like even how to find a book in the library, there's people there and supports there that help you through it. And then also um, each programme itself will design supports for you to kind of help you figure out and take that first step um, into third level education to kind of show you around. So really, when you're coming to start our programmes, what you do need to come with is, is passion and enthusiasm for what it is that you've decided to take on, but the rest we help you with. So you don't need to come as an experienced writer and you don't need to come as an experienced researcher. These are the skills that you gain as you progress throughout your programme. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's the library, the Academic Writing Centre. Also, and especially within the past year, and never has it been a time that these services have been so important to us, but we have access to our counselling services as well. So this year has thrown up so many for issues for so many of us and it's been a really difficult year to, to, to kind of get through and to navigate through and oftentimes as well becoming a learner may begin to get you might begin to question um, different things and different aspects of your life that maybe might start to bring you towards kind of the, the counselling services so we you have access to the counselling services as, as, a, as a student. And then when you're opening up that questioning, you also have access to our career development centre as well. So these are people that will assist you and help you to maybe it, it maybe it could be around CV preparation or interview skills, but also it might just be around having a conversation about where it is you want to progress to next. So you've gotten to this stage in your journey. Now, what's next for you? So it's all about kind of building your potential. So yeah, there are many, many support services that are available to our part-time learners within the university and really ready and, and willing to help. And of course, now many of them are available to us online, which <laughs> means you don't have to get to campus between the hours of nine to five, as Lorraine said, because that was often a stumbling block for adult learners before was they, they couldn't actually get to us um, you know, to, to the services within kind of working hours, but it doesn't really work like that anymore. It's all, it's all available online. There's great email support and you can engage in it in that way. But I will leave it on this. There's also great informal support. And it's what Lorraine said. It's about the bunch of friends and adult learners you're going to meet with within, within your new program of study. And we call this your community of practice. These are people that are exploring the same topic and the same theories as you. Um, you know, you work through things together. I WhatsApp groups, oh my goodness, they are the other side of the university. They have shared, I would say there's more information floating around WhatsApp on how to reference, how to look up things, you know, how to get through an assignment than there is on, 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 on any of our formal support services. So I'd just like to kind of echo what Lorraine said as well. Um, you know, you, you might notice with the way that we're engaging now, um, third level in higher education isn't that traditional classroom where your teacher stands at the top of the room and then tells you all the stuff and then you head out. It, it doesn't work like that anymore. We sort of are all co-pilots together kind of moving through. Yes, perhaps I might have access to some of the information that you might need, but, but I bring it to you and then we work through it together. And Lorraine mentioned there that her lecture was really open to learning about how it is that you progress together. 
for me, each of my learners, and this stands for all of my colleagues, we're in this journey with you. So we want to progress it with you. So it's about fostering that kind of relationship. So yeah, they're, they're just kind of an indication of some of the supports that, that are available to you as an adult learner. And there's lots more. And uh, we yeah. have entered some of the URLs for those ones that you mentioned, Jackie, very helpfully uh, in, the, in the chat function. So, so definitely take a look at those and on our website. I'm just thinking about that whole question of employability and um, I'm just maybe thinking about how courses deliver technical skills, but also those professional development skills, which are really important in the workplace, like communication, writing, presentation skills. Um, Lorraine, maybe I'll come to you and ask you about how the diploma in management helped you professionally and what skills you felt you developed from that. I would say professionally, it helped me with the, the management skills development was was very useful, um, even though I suppose if you're managing people, you don't have to think about it, but different personality traits, different approaches to tasks, different problem solving abilities, the idea of approach and every individual you work with as an individual and valuing them, respecting them and in many ways engaging with them in a different way and realizing that maybe there is a miscommunication here or misunderstanding how are you going to deal with that and how can you manage it and also how can you support people so what is your role in supporting individuals within the workplace you know as, as a member of a team and the importance of teamwork was one thing I did take away from it because in my day job I am I am self-employed so I work on my own and then I was put into a managerial role based on my experience but then realizing I hadn't been part of a team for a very long time. So for me, managerial practice was very, very important and also learning about different management styles and realizing that the one manager is not gonna work for every individual in a workplace. And also that you need to be um, encouraging others to develop management skills. You can't just have it yourself. You can't just have one manager in a job. You need lots of managers and you should be training and supporting people to develop management skills. So it gave me the opportunity to learn it so that I could pass it on to others and say to them, maybe this is stuff you need to look at for yourself or this could be helpful to you to use. So I suppose that side of it was very useful in work and Again, communication skills were vital. We did a lot of online presentations and um, even presentations as part of a group. So we had teamwork, we had team projects that were marked, which meant me and three others working on a project. And then we each took part in the presentation and we were marked as a group. And mm-hmm. in that project work, it was it was vital time as well, working with others and sharing responsibilities. And again, it's something you wouldn't think about at third level because people often think, I'm there on my own, I get marked on my own. But no, we came together as a group and we would have done two or three projects in, in groups of four and, and presented together online like this. So for some people, they hadn't done it before. They hadn't used Zoom before. They hadn't you know, shared documents different ways. We were all using different things and we were all engaging together. So that communication and those new skills are vital. Um, I would also like to give a special mention this evening to that there are people in my class who when they started the course they were in one job and they've actually progressed to a different job so that confidence building that realization that actually I am a good manager I do have good people skills I I am able I got a really high mark in that I I know this I can do this so that was really great to see I that was really inspiring and some of them have now moved on to other jobs using those skills so it does work it does help build confidence for people well that's very positive feedback and great to know that people have been enduring a course of progress so that's fantastic Kieran, you originally said that the course you did the MSc in Ag Innovation you did it for interest how has it helped you where you are today you're I understand you're still studying you've got the yeah. bug. I, I, I got the bug I suppose yeah so I am um, I'm going to tell a very quick little little story so when I was um, in secondary school my science teacher saw something in me I was always interested in science and he suggested I do a, a project for the for the young scientist exhibition this is off back in 1979 Nobody here would, would, would remember that time. Um, so I um, I did the practical end of it. I, I, I built a, a methane digester and I, 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 I made some methane and boiled an, an egg. But I didn't 
write it up. I didn't get that part of it done. So I didn't, the project didn't go to the, to the, to the exhibition. I decided then learning wasn't for, for me. After getting my master's, actually, while I was finishing the, the my dis, my dissertation, um, I, I saw a, a position came up in UCD forestry. Sorry, the other thing, I'm I've, I've been planting trees for the last thirty years. I'm passionate about forestry. Um, I saw an uh, a position come coming up with with uh, in UCD. Uh, uh, um, uh, I'm, I'm an MSc in 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 um, uh, uh, funded MSc uh, studying um, mitigation methods for ash dieback. So I took a moon shoot and I applied for it, and I got the, the position. So because I studied what I was interested in and just and kept looking at what I was interested in. I wouldn't have had a hope, only I, I, I had the, the, the Ag Innovation MSc behind me. So now I'm being paid, a pittance, but being paid to learn to be a, a scientist. So that's what has happened to me. Well, that is a fantastic story and uh, well done. Uh, to get the confidence, it, that MSc gave you that confidence yeah. to continue yeah. on and that is amazing mm -hmm. and, and fantastic, fantastic result. Jackie, I'll come back to you because you mentioned that word assessment earlier, not to forget about it. And we've heard talk from here on about writing theses and uh, we've had other talk about essays. Tell us a little bit about how we assess and the types of assessment we use in our adult learning programs. Yeah, absolutely. And so again, just Kieran and Lorraine, congratulations on, on, on your journey and what it is that's progressing you too. So I suppose our adult learning programs are all about um, you achieving your potential. And what you've both mentioned there and what Nula's mentioned, a lot of this is about is that you have the ability, but it's actually the confidence in that ability is really important. So we design our assessments in adult learning to really help you. Um, we call them sometimes it's, it's real life experience assessments. It's getting you to do things to perfect your skills that you will actually need when you are actually going to kind of test out that knowledge within, whether that be in your voluntary um, capacity or community capacity in your workspace or whether it is just your understanding around what it is that you're learning about. So your assessments. Um, they're really not traditionally as to what it is that you would have experienced before. For example, many programs don't do exams anymore, things like that. But rather what you would be doing is what Lorraine has been speaking about, might be engaging in maybe online discussion boards where there is a question posed at the start of the week. You might do some reading around that question and then you might offer your opinion back. On, on that idea or on that question. We love when you argue with it or maybe you'll agree with it, you know? So again, that's really up to you. So there's the discussion boards. Um, perhaps you might be engaging in presentations like Lorraine spoke about, which is again, you gaining the knowledge and skills. We don't expect you to know how to do it perfectly from the start. What we do is we help you gain the skills that you need to be able to engage in, in that type of activity. So presentations are really important to us, especially because right now many of our professional lives depend on our ability to communicate our understanding yeah i'd be you know there are a few essays thrown in there uh, you know they, they 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 do come about um but i think it's important to notice to to note that when you're writing an essay you're not writing an essay just to kind of spill out all of the knowledge that you already have no 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 that's not what it's about when you're writing an essay rather what you're doing is you're exploring and you're investigating a topic so we might be assigning you maybe three or four readings where you read those readings and then your essay is your opportunity to write about what it is that you understand and it's in that process of writing that really your true learning happens that that's when you get to really analyze what it is that you're thinking about now i can tell you nula that in my 20 odd years i forget now when when you have to start adding on years and the last two years are a blur anyway but you know i have met the most amazing people in my classroom and everybody is a little bit afraid of beginning that writing process again especially when we mention it but i'm here to tell you that we we talk all about 
you know, why do people have a fear of writing? What's writing about? What are you trying to do with your writing? And you gain the skills that you need as you do it. And yeah, there's a bit of trial by error, as I'm sure Lorraine and Kieran will um, admit, if you think back to your first essay, what it is that you wrote, that maybe you wouldn't be, um, you know, that it wouldn't be your favorite piece of writing. But I bet now what you're writing is at a much higher caliber and that if the you then could read what the you now is able to write, you would be you are impressed by, by what it is that you've achieved. And that's the learning process, Nula. It's not about like if you're sitting at home going now, oh, but I'd never be able to write an essay or how would I get that out? It's your learning is not about that. You will gain the skills that will help you transfer your knowledge communicate your knowledge and that's what returning to adult learning is all about it's gaining something new it would be no fun if you had all of this information before you came on to do the program it's about gaining that as you progress your way through so yeah so the assessments and and if we didn't have assessments you wouldn't have anything to give out about on the whatsapp group so you know it's nice to have something to complain about <laughs> as you move through but we do have assessments they're based on real life activities they're based on real life skills that you need to be able to to perfect as you move through. For example, I see that some people are thinking about automated control and things like that within the chat bar. Perhaps your studies might be some um, research or investigations you're doing in the work that you're already doing. So they're always experiential and assisting you to progress. So nothing to be worried about. And I think the key thing is we always try and apply them to experience and the workplace. And that's yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm just noticing the time and there's so much we could continue talking about, but I, I'm conscious that we want to go to our questions and answers sessions for our listeners tonight. So I'm just going to end on one question, both to Lorraine and to Kieran. We have a large number of people listening in tonight and they're thinking about doing a course. What would your one piece of advice be to them? Well, I start with you, Lorraine. What would you say? Uh, my first piece of advice would be um, make sure it's something you're interested in. Make sure it's something that inspires you because it will it will take time. Everything takes time. But that time and attention you give it, you get so much back. And it's like everything else. You, you get out of it what you put into it. So I would say go into it and, and go into it reading what the course syllabus is and knowing what exactly your assessments are going to be looking like and the course administrators again would always be very willing to give you an idea of what the reading list would be in advance and all of that if you think that would help you I would say plan and prepare and and I'm sure it will meet your expectations. Great advice thanks for that Lorraine. Kieran, uh, we'll give you the last word what would you advise our listeners? Uh, this, the same as, as Lorraine really mm. uh, uh, follow study something you're interested in right. and then it won't be the, the, the chore everyone thinks the, the study is. Stick with, with, with what you're interested in. That's si simple. That's, that's what I would that say. Is a, one very good takeaway from tonight. Do a course you're interested in and that's fantastic advice. Well, that concludes our, our panel discussion now for this evening. And I hope that you, you found the insights provided by Lorraine and Jackie and, and Kieran to be useful in assisting you to take the next step in your study and career plans. So for now, what I would like to say a huge thank you to Kieran and to Lorraine for your wonderful insights into your experience as students at NUI Goi. That has been so revelating and so wonderful to hear. And I'm really grateful for your, your time tonight and also to Jackie, Thanks so much for giving your experience of teaching adult learners for a long number of years. It is invaluable. So thanks everybody for listening and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>